Luqman tells his son, Ya Bunayya, la tu shirik billah. Oh my beloved child, don't, don't associate partners with Allah, for indeed that is a grave oppression. It is something wrong. It is a grave mistake, error. It is manifest, clearly wrong. Subhanallah. And look at how he addresses his child. He says, Ya Bunayya, oh my beloved son, oh my little child, oh my sweetie pie, basically. Because the term bunay is a very sweet way of addressing your child. It's one of the sweetest ways you could actually address your own son. You know, they say, Yabni, oh my son, and Ya Bunay, oh my beloved son. You know, today we look at our sons and daughters and we are shy to call them darlings and sweetie pies because you're shy to call your spouse that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us sweet, inshallah. I mean, May Allah make us sweet. May Allah make us sweet for the right people. Like I said yesterday, what's the point of smiling and being so sweet? And really, you know, being a charmer, mashallah. But you come home and nobody's charmed at home, mashallah. Because you're not interested. May Allah forgive us. You need to be the charmer at home. Forget about outside. At home, that's where you're supposed to be charming, mashallah. The same applies to the opposite sex. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us rekindle the beautiful links that we're supposed to be having within our homes. Within our homes. If we develop our link with Allah correctly, it will soften our hearts to be the best people to our family members. Here we have the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. The best from amongst you are those best to their spouses, to their wives in particular, and their family members at large. And the Prophet says, I am the best from amongst you in that regard. How many of us, our spouses and family members can say, this guy is the best. Can they? Can they? Oh, he's saying, ax them. Wow. Ax. That's typical to me. Huh? Ax them. Mashallah. We'll leave the question for next time, inshallah. You should be knowing it, you know, subhanallah. You should be knowing that, yes, I try to be the best I can. So, you know what? I'm sure they would acknowledge that, yes, you are the best. I just don't want to embarrass the brothers. Imagine if I were to ask the sisters a question. How many of you believe that your spouse is the best ever? And you find three or four hands. What would we do here? We'd have to close this meeting, subhanallah, and go home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So that's a question we won't ask them, my brother. Mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. <laughs> I just love the accent. I wish I had a Trinidadian accent. Mashallah. It's a pity I can't, I can't put it on. I tried. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story of Luqman alayhi salam because there is transformation in it. There is change. The ingredients for change are there. Do you know what he says? Ya bunayya. Oh my child, fulfill and establish your prayer unto Allah. Establish your prayer unto Allah. Establish it for the sake of Allah. And enjoin good. Remind people to do good in a nice and beautiful way. When you want to tell people to do good, there is a way of speaking. There is a way of telling them. You don't pretend like you're a big boss and everyone is so sinful. They're all going to hell and you're the only one going to paradise. So you actually look at yourself and say, hell, 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 paradise. If that's the attitude you haven't achieved, you need to speak to those who are, who might seem to be astray from the path. Because when you speak to them with goodness and kindness, they will really be enlightened to see that this path of goodness has in it a lot of contentment, a lot of purity, a lot of goodness, a lot of respect for others. But the sad reality is the more we become religious, sometimes the harsher and the harder we are becoming. If that's the case, your religiousness is not accurate. It requires a lot of changing, a lot of transformation. You need to soften yourself. Those who are the most religious from amongst us are very, very approachable. They are very, very soft in nature. They really care for everyone. They care for those who are drowning in the nightclubs and they pray for them at night when everyone else is asleep and they make sure that when they meet them, they are so, so engrossed in trying to win them over in the most beautiful way. This is Islam. This is religiousness, religiosity, whatever you'd like to call it. You want to be a pious person. Piety comes when you respect the other creatures of Allah, even the non-Muslims. 
the fact that you are so keen to talk to them the fact that you are so keen to show them to showcase to them the goodness of islam and the beautiful character and conduct that a muslim has been taught and you are so keen to see them see the light that is what would make you a person who has earned the pleasure of Allah, who is walking in the light that Allah has given us and has shone for us. But if you're so arrogant that you look at someone who's not on the straight path, for example, they may be, who knows, you might be on the wrong path. But say, for example, if someone's not on the straight path and you look at them as though there is no hope for them, where were you a few years back? Where were you? And who knows, where, what about your forefathers? Someone somewhere up the ladder accepted Islam. And where did they get the deen from? They got it subhanallah from someone who made an effort on them. From someone who tried. So you be a person who tries as well. And this is why establish your prayer. As Luqman alayhi salam is recorded to have said to his son. And the lesson is for us all. Enjoin that which is good. Call people towards goodness in a beautiful manner. Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Call towards the path of your Rabb with wisdom, with tact. Don't chase people away. Sometimes when we are regular with our prayers and we've dressed appropriately and we feel that we are decent Muslims, we chase others away because our attitude stinks. Really, we chase people away. They greet us, we don't greet back. We don't greet them sometimes because we think this man's going to Jahannam. No, he has said his Shahada, who knows? The tortoise might end the race before the hare, and you know that, subhanallah. You might have a person who's racing towards paradise, and last minute, something happens and they dwindle. And you might have a person who spent 70 years walking towards hellfire. And guess what? Last minute, they happen to transform and change. Who is the winner? May Allah help us all. This is why learn to be humble. Learn to be humble, to respect all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially human beings. Learn to understand your duty towards others is to call them towards the goodness. Imagine. And this is why those who go around inflicting harm, damage, sometimes executing and killing those who are non-Muslim, they need to learn that that is the furthest from Islam. If that was the teaching of Islam, none of us would be seated here today. We would have been killed a long time ago by people who believed we didn't have the right to exist because our forefathers were non-Muslim. There we are. But rather we are supposed to be going out, sharing the goodness, let them come, let them see, let them taste, let them, let them get the sweetness of putting the head on the ground for the sake of their maker. Let them see what it is. And if you inspire them to do that by the will of Allah, you will have a full reward of absolutely every act of worship they engage in because you made the effort by the help of Allah. Allah chose you to make that effort. So make the effort inshallah and call people towards goodness. And then he says, Wanha anil munkar. Discourage people from bad, but in a beautiful way, in a nice way. When you discourage people from bad, don't make it seem like they are the only ones who need help. No, we need help too. And this is why you hear a lot of the scholars say, may Allah guide me first and then everyone else. I need this more than you do. I think I said it yesterday and even the day before. Well, the day before I remember in particular, I said, I need whatever I've said in terms of advice. I need it before you. Why do we say this? Because wallahi, we are in the same boat. We're human beings. We are. And just like you would like me to pray for you, I would like you to pray for me. We all go through our human problems and na human nature that makes us, for example, uh, not be ideal. None of us are perfect. We are not perfect. So we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need the help of Allah. So when you are correcting someone, don't make like you are correcting them from a pedestal. Don't make like you are correcting them from perfection. No, you are not perfect. You are correcting them in something that Allah has blessed you or guided you to perhaps see. And at the same time, you can tell them, my sister, you know what? I'd like to tell you something. If there is anything you see in me or my brother, anything you see in me that needs change, that needs, you know, 
uh, that I need help in. Please tell me, please inform me. I'm about to tell you something. Don't be offended. I'm just like you because I noticed it. I'm just going to raise it with utmost respect. I'm not judging you and I'm not a person who's going to think that you're evil and bad. But I think subhanallah that perhaps you need to correct this little aspect. Maybe it will bring about a lot of goodness inshallah in your life. And inshallah you will achieve goodness in this world and the next.